Hey Health Junkies, it's time for The Health Fix. Join your host doctor, Janine Krause, as she gives you a dose of what you need to know and do right now to take control of your health from the inside out to rebel against aging, look damn good, fight stress, and laugh every day. Hello there, health junkies. Welcome to another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Krause. And today's episode is an interview with Noha Suleiman, who is the owner and the head creator and mastermind of the skincare and oral care line known as the Herbs and the Bees. She is going to be talking today all about her line and how she came to discover the line and how she went from not knowing anything about natural skin care and clean beauty to getting certificates and creating her own products and then creating a wonderful company that has very clean, pure products that really exemplify what it is in terms of the term clean beauty. She knows where all of her products are coming from. She has zero waste in terms of her product creation. You can even order serums from her and send back the bottles and she'll refill them and send them back to you no charge, which I find absolutely cool um, to have your product refilled and not have to trash any products. That is awesome. And what strikes me even more about her company is that she's helping folks in her community by having underprivileged um, women come in and help her with the operations of the business. But also when she doesn't have those folks coming in, she has her daughters lined up in an assembly line working together to put together the products. I find that absolutely just it's just heartwarming because I don't think there's a lot of companies out there anymore that are that family centric. And so I was super excited when I was contacted to interview Noha and I was taken back by her story. And and she's going to tell you her story in her own words here in a little bit. I do have to give you the disclaimer that I unfortunately messed up the timing on this. She is on the East Coast. I am here on the West Coast. And so we were both thinking 2 p.m. Um, both of our times. So she's hiding out in her basement <laughs> with the recording. So the audio is a little bit off. I do apologize for that. But I am going to edit it as best as I can. So hopefully you enjoy this podcast interview. But also the other biggie is that I didn't press record fast enough. So I have Noha talking about her twin daughters who are now 17. But at the time when she was just starting to become familiar with natural medicine and, and its benefits, it was around the time that her daughter, one daughter was diagnosed with scoliosis, but the other one started to rapidly develop scoliosis. And it's a very interesting story. And I'm going to let it go on terms of her taking over to explain it all to you. So here's Noha talking about how she came to find out about her second daughter having scoliosis and something called Chiari malformation. So listen in. I want to not have scoliosis. And I started to see physical changes in her body. So when the six months came, we went back and the doctor delivered very devastating news. He said, her scoliosis is very progressive, even though it was sudden onset within these six months, the progression in her curve is tremendous. And if we wait another six months, you know, it could be really detrimental to her to her posture, to her breathing, and we want to proceed to surgery as soon as possible. So we scheduled a surgery date that was three weeks out, and we were told, just like with my first daughter, that we need to do some preoperative testing, including an MRI, which was standard procedure for us because we had to do it for her other twin. We went in for the MRI, and I received a call that same day. It was like late at night, and they said, 
we think your daughter might have a brain tumor and we need you to see uh, a neurosurgeon tomorrow morning. They scheduled an appointment with a neurosurgeon that was about an hour away. It was 8 a.m. I took the day off, took her out of school. Of course, I didn't sleep all night. Let me tell you, it was like being punched in the gut over and over. Oh, I can imagine. Over and over again. And, okay, so good news, bad news. Good news, she doesn't have a tumor. Bad news, she has a Chiari malformation. Are you familiar with that? I'm absolutely familiar with that. I actually have a couple patients in my practice with that. Okay, great. So he said that her Chiari is very, it's in, the, it's in a very progressed state and that had we not caught it, she probably would have had paralysis the following year. He said that she has the maximum amount of fluid in her spine and that we're very lucky because since she was asymptomatic, which is not normal, they were very surprised that she was asymptomatic. But they said, based on how far along it is and the fact that she was asymptomatic, we would not have known until she started having difficulty swallowing and she would have started losing ability to move her hands. So it was a horrible, grim prognosis. And he again said the same thing. He said, this must be operated on immediately. I do not recommend you wait. And he had said that the, the pressure of the fluid in her spine was causing her spine to deteriorate. Wow. So, so within two weeks, my daughter was on the operating table having brain surgery. She was 15, 14 at the time. And it was the hardest thing I have ever gone through. Oh, it took about six months. We went back. Within the six months, we had gone every month. But every month, we would get the same response. The fluid is not moving. The fluid is not moving. Fast forward about eight months, and they said, listen, the surgery was successful. We shaved the bone. We made the space. But the fluid is just not moving. And so they said, we want to redo the surgery, and we want to put a shunt in her brain. Now, keep in mind, I went for three different second opinions <laughs> because it was such a devastating response. Like, no, I'm not going to go through surgery again. No way. Yeah. And of course, I'm sure you're, you're familiar how they make you feel like you're doing your daughter a disservice and this and that. Yeah. And so I, I, I went at the time we had gone to Great Wolf Lodge for the holidays Mm -hmm. And I was sitting one night and I was just crying by myself because when, when your daughter's going through it, you don't want to show her that you're sad. Mm -hmm. So I was literally just hiding in a place at, at Great Wolf Lodge crying. And a lady came up to me and she asked what's wrong. And I told her and she said, oh my God, go to this naturopathic doctor. I was losing my eyesight and I went to her and, you know, the, the medical community said they couldn't help me, but I went to her and she saved my eyesight and this and that. So I took the information and I called the next morning and the lady was like, oh, we have a year waiting list. I started begging and pleading and telling her the waiting list. If I get a cancellation, I'll call you. A week later, she called. She's like, I have a cancellation tomorrow. And she was two and a half hours away up on the highest mountain. I kid you not, our ears were popping as we were driving up to this woman. So I went to her, and this was the first time I have ever seen a naturopathic, a natural health. I didn't know anything about muscle testing. I just knew nothing of nothing. <laughs> and I sat there, and it just seemed like voodoo, and it seemed unreal. And I didn't know if I should believe, like, when my daughter's arm was falling. Because as she was muscle testing, my daughter's reaction, would, it wouldn't just be weak. The arm would just fall to the point where one time she sort of, like, lost her balance on the chair. Oh, wow. And so watching this, I'm like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And then when we were done, she recommended about $350 worth of herbs. Mm -hmm. And I was skeptical and I wasn't sure. And I kept saying to my daughter, was your arm really falling? Do you think that like it was real? And my daughter was saying she didn't know. Mm -hmm. But I was desperate. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to pay the money. Worst case scenario, I lost the money. I'm desperate. Mm -hmm. So I bought the herbs. We took them for three months against doctor's wishes. We didn't go to follow up with the doctor for those three months. Mind you, my husband was livid with me and he felt that I was crazy and losing my mind. But I was like, you know what? If we're going to do the surgery anyway, what's three months? Right. 
So three months later, we went to the doctor who was in Philadelphia and they redid the CAT scan and they looked at the results and they were like, oh my God, this is amazing. We've never seen such results like this before. The, 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 the difference in the fluid is just wonderful. What a significant change. What have you done? And so I told them and yeah. Uh, I don't feel that they felt the way I felt that they probably think it's a coincidence. I don't. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, I mean, I get goosebumps as I'm telling you the story, but I was just so excited and so happy. And basically what the naturopathic doctor said, she, she did the iridology. So she looked at her iris and she did the muscle testing. And what she felt was that my daughter's body was stagnant. She said that everything was stagnant, not just the fluid, the spinal fluid. Mm-hmm. And she said that my daughter also like her oxygen in her body was very low. And so in addition to all the herbs, she wanted us to stop using toothpaste with fluoride. She didn't want us putting anything on her skin. She wanted us to change shampoos. And so there was a real life shift. We stopped using plastic. We, we changed our lifestyle during those three months. And I started studying more about Chinese medicine and aromatherapy. And I started making a lot of the products at home for her. And then once she was healed, we decided that we were going to continue this. And I started doing it for all my kids. Before you knew it, friends and family were asking me to make stuff for them. And so all of last year, I was making and selling these products out of my home. And I started doing herbal hours in our community. And at the herbal hours, people would buy my products. And then I decided, you know what? I'm sure there's a lot of families out there that are looking for an alternative. And not everyone has the ability to research and start making this themselves. And that's why I decided to take my company public so that I can offer an alternative to all families. I want families to be able to get online or walk into a store and buy something that's natural and non-toxic. I'm also committed to educating. I, I take educating so seriously because I feel, I feel like parents need to know. At one point, I had no idea any of this was bad. I I'd never in a million years imagined that lotions or toothpastes could be in any way negatively impacting my daughter. Yeah. Wow. So I just, I, I, I try to educate as much as I can on my website, on my social media. And I'm actually working really hard to try to get my products into stores. And It's kind of like a double-edged sword because you lose a lot of money getting your product into stores. But I feel like if I only sell online, it's sort of selfish because then you're not reaching as many people as you can possibly reach. Gosh, Noha has quite a story. If I was her doctor, I'd be so proud of her products. I'd want to celebrate them and pretty much promote them to everybody. I love her tooth powder. So I just had to get more info. So let's see what she has to say about the tooth powder instead of toothpaste. So tell me about that toothpaste powder in terms of how did you come up with the formula? Because I've never seen something with cacao powder and cinnamon and kind of the combination that you have. Okay, so when I first started uh, changing out our daily routine, what happened was I started to go online and research. Originally, we just used bentonite clay. Then through my research, I found a few companies that are using bentonite clay with baking soda. And so it started there. It was bentonite clay originally with some essential oils for flavor. Then I started to do some more research about the baking soda because some companies try to scare consumers away from baking soda. As I did research, I learned that baking soda was safe and that it actually wasn't as abrasive as a lot of the commercial tooth powders. So I began adding that in. And then as I continued to do research, I came across so much research about cacao powder and how great cacao powder is for teeth. And I read more studies from Japan talking about cacao powder. And the more research I did on it, the more it felt like something I had to add to the formula. So that's where cacao powder came in. We played around with the cacao powder a lot um, to see how much of it we should put in. Originally, we had put in uh, a high percentage, but 
as we played around with the formula, we felt that we also wanted to increase the bentonite clay. So the reason I have these ingredients is the cacao powder remineralizes teeth. So it puts back a lot of minerals into the teeth that we lose through everyday eating. Mm -hmm. And the bentonite clay helps rebuild the enamel. Very cool. Very cool. And the baking soda had it for flavor. And altogether, go ahead. Oh, I was wondering about the cinnamon. Cinnamon for flavor? Yes. So the cinnamon actually has cinnamon and peppermint. Uh, it's for flavor. And also cinnamon is great for the uh, gums, as is myrrh. We also have myrrh. Myrrh is fantastic for the gums, but it's also for flavor. Ha. Huh. And so for a lot of people out there, they're like, okay, toothpaste, toothpaste powder, tooth powder. How do we use it? So tell us how, how you would use it. How do you get it on your toothbrush and how do you get working with it? So what we recommend, and I've done a lot of testing on this with my own kids, we recommend that you wet your toothbrush and then shake off the excess water. If you're a new user and you're just making the switch, we recommend that you put in about a quarter of your toothbrush. And as you become a more avid user, we recommend that you cover about half of your toothbrush. And you just brush as you regularly would. Through testing on my own family, I have realized that if you have certain sensitivity or you have an area on your teeth that needs more rebuilding of the enamel, we found that if you put the tooth powder on your toothbrush and then manually put it on your problem teeth and just leave it there for a minute, it really, really makes a difference. And when you're done, you just spit and you don't need to rinse. So what we, what we put on all our products is that the ingredients are safe enough to eat. So everything in my tooth powder is safe enough to eat. They're all ingredients that you can ingest. Uh, normally, if, uh, normally you could swallow, but we say after you brush not to swallow and to spit because the bentonite clay has absorbed all the toxins and bacteria in your mouth. So you don't want to swallow those again. It's better to spit but you don't need to rinse because none of the residual ingredients in your mouth are harmful. Ah, okay. Gotcha. That's cool. And so tell us a little bit about experimenting with your kids and getting them to try. Cause I think a lot of parents out there are going to be like, Oh boy, it's hard enough to get my kids to, to brush their teeth. Let alone try something new. So originally when the formula had been to my clay and no cacao, I was using it on my four older girls, but I wasn't using it on my two younger boys. So I have a three-year-old, a five-year-old, and then I have, a, those are boys. Then I have a 13-year-old daughter, twins that are now 17, and a, a daughter that's 18. And when we first started, I didn't introduce the bentonite clay to the kids yet uh, because I wasn't sure if they would like it. I wasn't sure if it was a little chalky. But when we added the cacao powder in, I felt comfortable introducing it to the younger ones, and they love it. They feel they always say, "Mom, we want to brush our teeth with the chocolate." <laughs> um, <laughs> That's awesome. When I went to the dente with chocolate, she thought I was insane, but. That's just to give you an idea, especially when, when you use the peppermint flavor with kids. It's like peppermint chocolate. It's almost like you're brushing your teeth with a York peppermint patty. Oh, so my, my three-year-old, every day, he tongue scrapes and he brushes his teeth. He knows how to dip it in the tooth powder and he brushes his teeth and he loves it. He doesn't complain at all. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Love it. I think a lot of parents will enjoy hearing that because, I mean, definitely, I think most people are chasing their kids around trying to get them to brush their teeth. So if they're taking the initiative on having their chocolate powder, then... The only thing I want to make sure I, I underline and I emphasize is that start out with a small amount because if you start, if the kids on their own go and they dip the whole toothbrush in, that's going to be a lot of powder in their mouth and it might make their mouth feel dry and then they'll hate it. So start off for kids a tiny bit on the tip of their brush and slowly increase that and they will love it. Oh, excellent, excellent. Because okay. I've had one of my daughters, she started out, she dipped her whole toothbrush in and she brushed her teeth and she started coughing and she was like, this is terrible. 
<laughs> I'm like, you weren't supposed to put that much. So the recommendations I make is after a lot of trial and error with my kids and my siblings and my friends and family, we, we don't test on animals, but we test on a whole lot of people. <laughs> that works. That works. So tell me a little bit about your skincare products, because I saw that you have something for acne um, in particular. Were you using that on your teenagers? Um, yes. And, yes. And we're currently writing on, we're currently updating our website. Um, I plan on having a disclaimer that we have discovered that it does not work on cystic acne. So the blemish serum is fantastic and it works very well on blemishes, on breakouts. Uh, I use it, my, my kids use it, but one, my sister has cystic acne, the, the acne all over that's under the skin mm -hmm. and is almost like swelling the whole face. And it doesn't seem to work on that. That seems to be something that needs to be healed from the inside out. And I know from experience that there are some medications, strong prescription medications that can help from the outside. However, it's my true belief that that's something that needs to be addressed from the inside out. However, if you have regular blemishes, pimples, you know, breakouts, the ingredients in my Be Gone Blemish Serum are fantastic because they reduce the swelling, they, they reduce the redness, they work on the pimple, and you can feel sometimes there's a little tingling you can feel it working mm -hmm. uh one uh one thing i also want to mention is that we've heard from some of our consumers that and uh, we requested that they write this in the reviews because for whatever reason they called us and they didn't write it on the review so we want to mention it because i want to be very transparent so that consumers know what to expect but we were told by more than one consumer that sometimes what happens is If they are feeling of night, when they wake up, it has turned into a whitehead. And what we tell the consumers is that what's happening is in an effort to get rid of all that bacteria and get rid of that pimple, it sort of gets better before it gets worse before it gets better. Mm -hmm. And I find that to be a recurring theme in natural health. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> yes. So, so some, you know, it, it, I don't know because I don't use prescription medications if that's the same with prescription meds, but definitely with our natural, sometimes depending on how far along the blemish is, it sometimes gets worse for a day before it starts getting better. I think, you know, that's definitely the case too with some of the prescription items out there that I've seen used on patients. But with the natural side of things, the the getting worse before it gets better is almost like, you know, you know it's like speeding up the process to get it out. But if we're talking yeah. about acne, I guess that's another thing to tell consumers that if they have a big event coming and they're trying to get rid of something, do it a couple days before. <laughs> exactly. I definitely agree with you. And we're working on updating the description as we're getting more and more feedback. We want to be more and more transparent because I wouldn't want somebody to, to spend the money if they have cystic acne and then they'd be disappointed. Absolutely. Well, that's, that's huge. Yeah. I like the integrity. I uh, for sure, about your products. Now, tell me One, about your I'm sorry? Well, tell me about your other two products that you have. So one thing I wanted to mention about our, about the three skincare products that we have is that not all organic oils are created equal. Mm -hmm. And what's, what I feel differentiates my skincare is that the organic oils that I use are unrefined. These are more difficult to attain and they cost more, but I believe it makes a difference. When the oils are unrefined, they're not deodorized, they're not bleached, they're not stripped of the, of the color or the nutrients. And so, and I only use oils that have been cold pressed to, again, make sure that I'm preserving the oil in its natural form. In addition, the vitamin E that I use in my three skincare products is sunflower oil. It comes directly from sunflower oil that's non-GMO. I do not use any soy vitamin E and I never use synthetic vitamin E. And the reason I do this is because I want the product to be as natural, non-toxic, and easy to assimilate into your skin as possible. I also avoided using any water because I didn't want 
to have any pH issues and I didn't want the formulas to and so I feel that that's one that's a major differentiator between my product and a lot of products that are on the shelf because to be organic it does not in any way prohibit um, companies from using refined and de deodorized and bleached oils. I think that's a really good comment that you made right there because I think a lot of people don't know that. And that's what I always try to explain to people, especially with the vitamin E, because you can use synthetic lab-made vitamin E in an organic product and the skin does not respond to the, to the synthetic vitamin E as it does to the natural. And a lot of the research that companies and individuals report on is based on natural vitamin E, but then they put synthetic vitamin E. So you're not getting the results you think you're getting because you're not using something that's botanical and plant-based that your body understands. You're using synthetic oils that are lab made. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's unfortunate. It's a common thing out there. The other thing that's common and you mentioned too is about the water because a lot of people will yes, look at water-based items and, and I'm like, oh, there's some problems with that too. Yeah, and so what people think, they think that oil-based will cause breakouts and will clog pores, so they turn to water-based products, which a lot of times have a much higher pH than your skin. And so what we're doing is we're trying to educate consumers to explain to them that the oils in our cleanser are non-comedogenic, they will not clog your pores, and that oil on oil is better for your skin because when you strip your skin of the natural oils using detergents and soaps, your skin now realizes that the oils have been stripped and it goes into overdrive creating more oil. Mm -hmm. Another thing that we try to educate consumers on is the fact that your skin has a microbiome just like your gut. Mm -hmm. And the oils, when you use oils to clean it, you're not disrupting that microbiome. And you're not ripping it of the good bacteria that it needs. So well, we were just at, a, at Expo East this past week, and we must have seen thousands of people. And we kept repeating this message over and over again. And people were so surprised to hear that they don't need to wash our cleanser off. I would say to them, you rub it in, you take go a, a warm, moist towel to put on your face, inhale the aroma because our, our cleanser smells divine and then you wipe the makeup off and just leave the oils to penetrate in your skin and moisturize so it was such a different experience for them i would put some of the cleanser on their hand they'd rub it in and they'd smell it and they would just laugh because they're not used to not removing a cleanser i'm like you can leave it on it'll moisturize feel how soft your hand feels and i think that's an important thing to think about especially for ladies as we get older because I think a lot of us are still using harsh um, cleansers that really do strip our skin and then we're kind of you know <laughs> taking one step backward and you know each time we cleanse it's degrading to our skin. I totally agree I get so excited when I meet people that know this and preach this I feel like we all need to come together and sort of preach the same message so we can actually make a difference. Absolutely. Absolutely, which is why I'm glad that you have your blog up and, and running. I was reading through a couple of your articles in the last few days and really great material there. Now, Thanks. are you working by your, I saw women owned. Who are you, who else are you working with? So I am the one and only owner of the company. Um, I'm women owned and I'm also family owned. So Currently, we are handcrafting these, so I make the formula, and I fill the bottles, and my girls sit with me in the manufacturing facility, and so one girl will close the bottle, one girl will shrink wrap it, another girl will make the box, another one will close the box, and it's a, it's a family effort, and I love it. Uh, I feel that when we are together, and we put on some music, and we all work together, it's bringing us closer together. I feel that they're learning a great lesson in business, in responsibility. We were just at Expo East and they took three days off of school and they came with us and they were doing an amazing job in sales. Uh, my 13 year old was bringing over attendees to, to the booth 
My one daughter was helping me with the pitch. Another one was giving out samples and it was just wonderful. We also have some, we also employ women to help because we can't be the only ones that make it. Uh, we have part timers and we always hire from underprivileged areas so that we can help these women who are on welfare to make a living wage. Oh, wow. But whenever possible and all summer long, it was a family effort. And I love that part of the business. I, that's actually my favorite part when we all get together and we work together and everybody has a job and we have it down to a science. Actually, it's wonderful to watch. It's, it's a, it's a real pleasure. I feel. Have you videotaped it? You should put that on your website. I really want to, actually. I was talking to somebody. Um, I'm trying to find a freelancer that can take high-quality video for us. We can't afford at this point in, in the business to hire a big production company, and we can't necessarily upload an iPhone-taken video. So we're, we've been speaking to several people about freelancing an affordable video to show you know, the process. It's incredible just the knowing that it's it's you sitting down with your daughters. I can imagine your your assembly line there. And I think for a lot of people, you know, getting we're we're so sick of big operations and we like to hear about small family operations and, and kind of going back to to the origins of, of where business started. It's I definitely agree. I, and I, and on my boxes I always write on every box that goes out, it says, by making this purchase, you are helping a small women-owned business so that people understand that we're different. Everything about our company is different. We were offered several uh, opportunities with investors, and I refused, even though it would be a huge help in terms of marketing and, like I said, videos. But I don't want anybody dictating uh, any of the the moves we make. I don't want to make any moves based on financial gain. I want to make them based on ingredients and well-being. And so on every box, it says, by purchasing this product, you are supporting a small women-owned business. Uh, you are loving the environment by choosing glass, reducing waste in our landfills, living a non-toxic lifestyle, and being kind to animals. And I want to stay as true to that philosophy as I can. I love it. I love it. I can't Thank wait you. to see where you guys are headed. So that being said, what's next in terms of, of products? What are you guys thinking about? What are you, what are you thinking? So right now we are available on Amazon as well as our website. And we're being offered in several health food stores in our area. We were just at Expo East in Baltimore, Maryland this past week, and we met and connected with several retailers. So we're currently working on trying to get into supermarkets, pharmacies, we, and we ask anybody that is on board with our mission and wants to see our products to go to their local supermarket, their local Rite Aid or CVS or Whole Foods, and ask for our products to be on the shelves. We, uh, we met with Rite Aid, we met with CVS, we met with Whole Foods, and I don't know where that's headed, but it would be definitely a big help for these consumers to ask for us to be carried in these stores. That would be a big help. Absolutely, absolutely. So all of you listening to this podcast right now, I want you to check out your products. And so let's tell the folks where to head so your website your info give them all the the breakdown on where they can find you online and everything so definitely going to www.theherbsandbees would be our first choice for where they can get our product because then we don't have to pay amazon <laughs> however and we offer free shipping on our website uh, there's no minimum and if you do want to go through Amazon, we are available on Amazon. We are Prime, and we're shipped for free. Uh, uh, however, it's a little more difficult to find us because we're new on Amazon, so you might have to type in the name of the product. When I go on Amazon and I type in the herbs and bees, I don't always come up on the first page. 
So you might want to go to the website, see which product you're interested in, and it's a lot easier to find us if you put in the name of the product. Uh, in addition to that, you would have to request, if you're not in New Jersey, request us at your local store, and we would love to be featured in that store. I, I made a special coupon code that I wanted to offer all of your listeners as a thank you for being featured on your podcast. And so I, I wanted you to pick the coupon code that you felt would be good. I wasn't sure if health fix 15 for 15% would be too long. Probably not. I think that's fine. Health fix 15. Is that, that's what I had thought of. And I thought I'd get your opinion. I didn't want some. <laughs> I like it. I think too long for your. Okay, perfect. All right. So health fix 15 for all your listeners, they can go on our website and put that promo code in and it'll give them 15% off everything on the website and free shipping. Excellent. And I will also put it, the link um, to your website, the herbsandbees.com on my podcast notes so that everybody can click there too and go directly to your website, check out your items. I am super excited about grabbing the toothpaste powder and some, probably all of your serums because I want to try all of them. I have an esthetician in my office who is a little in terms of the old school style of, of aesthetics. I'm trying to turn her over to more of the clean beauty items. And so my, my ulterior motive is to have her try everything of yours and see how much uh, she loves it. And then have us carry your products also in our office. Uh, that would be fabulous. I, and I would love to speak to her to sort of explain to her the best way to use the products. Uh, I want her, I want to go over, and, and, and a lot of it is on our website, but I found that, like I said, we were at the expo last week. I found that as I walked people through, you know, and actually I'll take a minute if you don't mind and walk them through on the podcast yeah. Uh, how to use the product because it's such a wonderful experience. And so the way that we start out, we, we tell people to work the oil in a circular motion all on their face, the cleansing oil. It's safe enough to rub on your eyelids, work into your eyelashes with your eyes closed, get it everywhere. Uh, sometimes if you have a, a thick layer of makeup or if you have very dry skin, you need more than what is recommended and you'll be able to gauge because you'll feel the makeup loosening up with the oil and then take a warm, moist towel, place it on your face, leave it there for a few seconds as you breathe in the beautiful aroma and then wipe the makeup off with the towel. Then we follow it up with the anti-aging serum, which is very moisturizing. And so we say that's a one step and done. You do not need to moisturize after using the Be Youthful Serum because once you put it into your skin, you'll feel how intensely moisturizing it is to your skin. And then I recommend waiting a few minutes, finishing your nightly routine, and then going to sleep. And it's like aromatherapy all night as you inhale the geranium and the frankincense and the Roman chamomile. It's such a wonderful experience. If there are breakouts, we recommend just spot placing the Be Gone Blemish Serum just on the spots that you need it. You don't necessarily need to put it on your whole face. Okay. Okay. And it's such a spa-like experience. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Like, ooh, warm towel. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I'm there. I'm there. Oh, I love it. I love it. I look forward to hearing her feedback. I think she will uh, enjoy it very much. Definitely. I will get you in touch with her. What I'll do is I, um, I will get all her info and, and hook you up with talking to her because I think it would be really nice to have that aspect in our office because with me being a naturopathic doctor and, and leaning more towards clean beauty, I'm trying to get a little way of, away from all the clinical lines that are just big big, huge conglomerates. I like the small business aspect and I love just the envisioning, like have the vision of you and your daughter is all sitting there in your assembly line. It just, it just makes the business even, even more special. Thank you. I also wanted to mention to you that we are committed to being plastic free. And so all of our products are made from, all our packaging is in glass 
and our packaging materials are made from recycled materials. So our boxes are recycled and uh, our tongue scrapers come in recycled cotton drawstring bags that can be reused as traveling bags with all our products. Uh, we also are trying to support the zero waste movement. We think it's a fantastic initiative. And so we have decided to offer customers the ability to send their empty bottles back and we will refill them at a 10% discount and mail them back free. Oh, wow. And this is open as many times as consumers want to do it. This way we feel that we can reduce our carbon footprint as much as we can. You have covered every aspect. I, we try. We really try. Even our toothbrush. Our toothbrush is made of bamboo, which is biodegradable and compostable. And the bristles are BPA-free, and they're infused with activated charcoal. So they, they whiten and deodorize as you're brushing. And what we've seen online, customers have been tagging us, they are removing the bristles with tweezers and then they're throwing the toothbrush in the compost pile. And some people have even dug up in their backyard and just um, buried it there. And within a few months, it completely disintegrates. Oh, wow. Huh. So we, we, we were definitely excited. We're very excited to be an eco-friendly, socially responsible company yeah that's that's awesome you've got all of the different checkpoints so everybody that's listening to this podcast they they you guys fit like all my criteria for for a business that i definitely want to be supporting and so well, i appreciate that very much we also really enjoy your blog i actually put it on my favorite <laughs> <laughs> good deal well i hope to keep chatting with you. I'm going to put you in contact with my esthetician after our podcast here. And for everyone that's listening, you can head on over to the Herbs and Hello. And you can check out all of the offerings there in terms of three skincare products. You've got the tooth paste powder i'm calling it toothpaste powder but it's really tooth powder and you've got the toothbrushes and the tongue scraper and all amazing products so head on over there i'm going to have more notes we also have the health fix 15 product code for all of you that are interested in checking out and experimenting a little bit with the herbs and bees so noha thank you so much for coming on my podcast and talking all about your story and your business and just sharing so much information with my folks. Oh, it's, it's absolutely my pleasure. Hey everybody, Dr. Janine Krause here. If you liked what you heard today, then head over to drjkrausnd.com to find my free resources and information to know when I post something new that's juicy that you might want to check out. Plus, head over to where you get your podcasts and like, subscribe, and write a review to help get the word out about me and help others at the same time to find me. It really does help and I really appreciate all of your reviews.